I want you to listen. And then what? Share it. With? Whoever you share with. Whoever you know, the people you're close to. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Matter seems like a good place to begin. The solidity of the world seems totally indisputable. As a fixed thing that you can see and touch, your body is also reassuringly solid. But beginning with Einstein, modern physics has assured us that this solidity is a mirage. All of physical matter, everything we have around us, is the result of a frequency. And what that also means is that if you amplify the frequency, the structure of the matter will change. of Aristotle and from that concept came science's conception of matter. The fact of the matter is that the substance of the universe is consciousness. Belief that the substance of the universe is matter leads to what I call a fear-greed dichotomy as people in their quiet desperation attempt to accumulate as many material uh, 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 possessions and riches as possible. In fact, the substance of the universe is consciousness. Therefore, it is behavior that is important. The only life we perceive with our five senses is not reality. Quantum physics has shown that space and time are illusions of perception. Therefore, our bodies cannot truly be a reality if they occupy this space. Rutherford performed an experiment in Manchester that revealed him the shape of the interior of an atom. Scientists were shocked to discover that the atom is almost entirely empty space. The question then became, how could this empty atom possibly make the solid world around us. The blank matter within the most basic building blocks of perceivable existence is malleable and molded by intent. This means that consciousness shapes our reality. This seems difficult to accept for most and it is quite understandable. In modern times, we are taught from an early age how to think rationally and tangibly. This is a very left-brain method of education, and it has more harmful effects than it's given credit for. The left brain deals with logic, details, facts, patterns, practicality, science, and math. 
as the right brain deals with feeling, intuition, symbols, images, risk-taking, philosophy, and religion. With a deliberate push for government-controlled educational curriculums, generation after generation of the youth are being taught to focus only on the facts, figures, and numbers. Repetition is used to train children subconsciously to accept what they're learning. Children aren't rewarded for questioning the validity of the information they receive. They are ridiculed. However, the children who blindly accept the information as true and merely regurgitate the information on command when it is time to take a test, those children go on to become the decision makers in our government, law, medicine, business, and every other occupation with power and prestige. The most detrimental effect of being pushed away from holistic thinking with the full brain into a strictly left brain thought is what is known as the suppression of the feminine. Every male and female have both feminine and masculine qualities. It has nothing to do with man or woman. These are represented by the left and right brain, yin and yang, black and white, light and dark, and most every other duality. Both are vital to our spiritual and physical health. So the intangible parts of our existence, such as emotions, are part of the true reality of higher consciousness. If emotions are part of a realm that we cannot experience with our five senses, then how is it that we are all aware of our emotions? What most people believe to be emotions are not truly the emotion itself. What we are experiencing is the physical manifestation of these emotions. Anger causes disturbance in the psyche which manifests itself in the ego. These manifestations cause the heart rate to increase, body temperature to rise, and spawn many other physical traits that signify anger. Just as music from the radio is a physical manifestation of an intangible signal, our experience of emotion is the physical manifestation of an intangible signal as well. It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are four possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure, yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love. In DNA, you can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. The information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. It's important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popanov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. 
This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. So the messages left by the ancients that we've explained here were more than prophecies about a one-world government or a new world order. We now understand why the study of the heavenly bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions. This helped the ancients understand that the change of the heavenly bodies were a mirror to the changes of all existence. These are hertz frequencies or cycles per second that the musicians can retune their instruments to play and experiment with. Why? Again, these are the creator's musical scale, the original solfeggio buried for 3,000 years in the Bible. So the ancient priests who knew how to levitate the huge stones for the building of the pyramids and the Masonic knowledge that predated ancient Egypt, the ability to have this information, these frequencies serve the function of creation, destruction, and miracles on behalf of the empowered people who had access to this knowledge. I say that because of this metaphor. This is the difference between the power of the, our Creator and anything else, particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well-lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness and joy and health and harmony with the universal power. And you can't take a, any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we win in the end. As you are watching this, understand that it is not a fight to be fought. It is not a war to be waged. No gun rights have to be exercised. Not a finger has to be lifted. Most people wonder how one person can make a difference. They ask that if all this is so simple and this information is available, why hasn't someone else conquered their fears and changed the world for everyone else? This is the most difficult and beautiful conundrum to our lives. Your reality affects you and only you. Your curiosity has led you to this genre of information to serve a very specific purpose in your life. So, who is in control? Huh? Are you? Am I? The guards outside? The warden in his office? Yeah? Who's in control? Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Dr. Ethan Powell interviewing Dr. Theo Porter. Now, this will be a very simple test. Pass or fail, life or death. You ready, Jean? Now, you write on this paper what I have taken from you. What have you lost? Write it! Write it! Never had control. You only thought you had it. An illusion, tabby bourgeois. And what do you control? For sure. Huh? The volume in your stereo, the air conditioning in your car. What else? What else? 
Hi. Another chance. You were nervous. Too much pressure. Try again. What have you lost? What did I take? Write it. Write it! Do you think you were free? Where were you going at 2 o'clock today? Into the gym, right? In the morning, your wake-up call. In the middle of the night, when you wake up sweating with your heart pounding. What is it that has you all tied up, Jua? Tied up in little knots. Is it ambition? Yeah. You're no mystery to me, boy. I used to be you. Okay, one last chance. You think I won't do it? <laughs> That's one psychiatrist less to the world. I'm already deep in the pit, so what can they do to me? Last try. Get it right. What have you lost? What did I take from you? Right in. Congratulations. Dear student, after all. And you've lost nothing but your illusions and a little bit of skin. I want to finish this. Finish what? Telling you what I know. What makes you think what you know is any different than what other people know? I had different teachers.